All right, shall we get into the daily business, huh? Dark World, I already read those earlier this morning. I think they're gonna be good, especially this first one. Let's read it together one more time and let's think about what this means. Genta, Gateman of the Dark World, level 4 Dark Fiend. You can only special summon Genta, Gatekeeper of Dark Worlds, once per turn. You can discard this card to the graveyard, add one Gates of Dark World from your deck to your hand. If this card becomes banished and you control a Dark World card, you can special summon this card. He's completely busted. You guys don't understand. I'll, I'll show you real quick what this means. This card is not once per turn. The effect where you can banish a fiend from the graveyard, discard a fiend and draw a card. This discard effect, if this translation is correct, is also not once per turn. So even if you draw multiples, you can keep discarding this and adding the field spell to your hand and use it again. Well, it's once per copy, is what I should say. Second, this card needs a fiend in the graveyard to, for it to work. This used to be a problem for Dark World, is like, how do you get started, right? Because you have this busted field spell that lets you discard your Dark Worlds and even draw a card in the process, which is not once per turn, but you need to have something in the graveyard, which this thing immediately goes to the graveyard because you're discarding this to add the gates. And number three, this is the perfect banish for the gates of Dark World because it comes back from the banished pile. And it's absolutely insane, right? Because it's a level four. That's probably the best level in Dark Worlds because you can make Dugaris, which is just draw two, discard a Dark World. It's literally, you just make part of greed. The next thing is what Arishel already said. This thing special summons itself, so you can just bounce it with Grapha or the new guy and discard it again for another Gates of Dark World. This card is absolutely crazy. You guys don't understand. Like, this is the best Dark World card ever printed, I think. Just for reference, let's quickly recap the old support that's already been revealed like a month ago. The big rainbow is already really good. He does the same thing as Grapha, where you can special summon it by returning to hand, which once again, like I said, really good with specifically this one. But when he's discarded, or if he's discarded, I, I should say, you add a level 5 or higher Dark World from your deck to your hand. Grapha is the same card, pretty much, but instead of searching, Grapha destroys. Which, this one is clearly better going first, right? Because you won't have a target for Grapha, so that's why this one is pretty good. We have the Fusion Monster and the Fusion Spell, which were both really, really strong as well. Back then, when we looked at this, which at this point is probably like three weeks ago or something, I already said this has potential to be a good deck. So let's look at the other two new cards, which I think I remember them being okay. Pearl Hermit of Dark World is level 1 fiend. You can only use the effect of this card's name once per turn. If this card is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target a Dark World in your grave, special summon it to either field. Then, if this card was discarded by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon one of your fiends that is banished in hand or in the graveyard to either field. He's not bad. He looks badass for a level 1 dude. He got no business looking that strong. Like, he could easily be a level 8 monster with that artwork, but okay. He's alright, but the best synergy that I see with this guy, it depends a lot on if we're gonna use Ceruli or not, right? Because Ceruli is the one that has, like, the use of being summoned to the opponent's field. If you summon Ceruli to your field with the Dark World effect, your opponent has to discard, so you can, like, hand loop for to an extent, right? If you summon Ceruli a couple times, which is kind of interesting, but also, like, summoning this to your opponent's field can be really ridiculous with some of the Dark Worlds. Also, interesting to note is that if you discard this early on in your turn, it disables things like Impermanence. Impermanence is always going to be relevant. Let's say you start with a very simple combo of like using this guy to search your field spell, and then using the gates, banishing the level 4, discarding Ceruli, which then summons to your opponent's field. You've already disabled um, Impermanence, you've disabled um, other things, right? It's kind of interesting before using anything important. And I think, I predict Impermanence to be still popular when this comes out. Will Brown get played? If you mean this guy, Bron, then there's no way. If you mean this guy, then 100%. This is one of the best Dark Worlds. Like, out of the current Dark Worlds, you're probably gonna play Ceruli. Maybe, though. That's not a given. You're definitely playing these, right? These are the busted ones. And then we play some amount of Grapha, and then maybe we play Silva slash Gold. Let's actually recap, because I don't remember. What does the new fusion do again? When your opponent activates it's a normal spell trap or monster effect you can make that effect become your opponent okay so this is basically a negate plus it allows you to, to discard a card which is treated as being discarded by your opponent which is really really good right so the goal is always going to be to end on this thing definitely or summon it on your opponent's turn because the fusion is quick play we're definitely going to play this guy and try to like have a silva in hand so we can hand rip really hard just imagine like using ceruli once or twice on your turn ripping one or two cards out of their hand they're already left at four or five cards right when they start their turn and if you then pull off the fusion to 
negate one of their four cards. This card is Silva. They're down to one card already with that interaction, if you can pull that off. And at this point, we haven't really talked about how consistent this looks, right? Because, like, I don't even know if you need to run, like, multiple Graffas. I don't know how many of the new Rainbow you play. Like, let's just say this is the new Rainbow, right? Because, of course, you don't play this one. This one's pretty bad. You probably played the new Rainbow because that's the one that searches Graffa. And this is a level 8. Graffa is a level 8. You can easily go into the realm of, like, uh, rank 8 XYZs. This deck's gonna be crazy. And then, once again, the fusion spell on the opponent's turn allows you to discard Dark Worlds from your hand as fusion material. Which means you trigger your Grafa on the opponent's turn again. It's absolutely... This deck is crazy. It's absolutely insane. If you have trouble finding starter cards, right? Because all of this is only good when discarded, for the most part. And the gates needs a fiend in the graveyard, which this card helps a ton, but you can't really rely on just opening that card. What you can do with this card, right, because this has, during your main phase, if this card is in the graveyard, you can add it to your hand, then discard a Dark World monster. You can play Foolish Burial Goods. What does the, the spell do again? Continuous spell card, Dark World Library. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name each once per turn. During your main phase, you can discard one Dark World monster, and if you do all Dark World monsters you currently control, gain attack. Okay, so this is the the attack gain is not really relevant, but it does give you an easy way to discard without condition. Actually, if you discard something like a Grafa, like an 800 push to every monster, that can be relevant, right? That can definitely be the difference in an OTK or not. Because like you push two or three monsters, that's already like 2400 additional damage. It's not bad. If your monster whose original type is Fiend is discarded by the effect of a Dark World card or an opponent's card, even during the damage step, you can discard one card, then draw two cards. Wait, does this trigger itself? Like, can I use the first effect and then off of the first effect, I discard, I, I trigger the second effect? It should work, right? Oh my god, this card is insane. This is another busted card. The only thing that makes this card not completely insane is that it's once per turn. So if you draw multiples, it's bad. You can search this with snow. Yeah, the thing is, it's a very good starter card. So you might still want to play multiples, right? But you don't want to... Like, Dark Worlds has always been a deck that draws a lot of cards, right? It always had this problem sometimes of drawing redundant cards multiple times right so because like the gates is an upstart goblin your brows dig your snows deck thin this card is going to draw cards and look we haven't even talked about two very important cards for this archetype number one allure of darkness to deck thin to find your power cards also allure of darkness has synergy with this thing if you already have a dark world card on the board and you don't want to keep this in hand to like um get the gates you can just banish this with allure and it just comes back by the way the next thing is dangers, dude. Have you thought about dangers in this deck, dude? It's absolutely ridiculous what you can do with dangers. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if something like Scythe is still gonna be around by the time that we get this stuff. Hopefully not. But Dark Worlds themselves don't really care that much about like being extra deck locked, for example. I'm gonna say right now, if there's no like significant balancing to these cards before they release, this is gonna be a top tier deck. Dark World is going to be top tier. I don't know if it's like tier zero strong, but this is very strong. Doesn't Shifter shit on them? Yeah, but like most meta decks can't play Shifter because they need their own grave. Mirrors sound weird. Well, I mean, out of all the cards, except for Dark World dealings, you don't really have anything that forces your opponent to discard, right? So it's not actually that insane. Unless you play like the card destruction, of course, that's a disaster. Cards like Dark World dealings and card destruction, I don't think are going to be your main way of getting the deck going if... This deck becomes meta relevant. You don't want to be playing these cards at all because they're bad in the mirror, right? Oh, they're here. Okay. We can try to build it. There's no way this deck is not good. Like, I, of course, this build is just throwing everything together. Like, that's not good yet. Can I use this if I don't have monsters? No, right? That's a little drawback, right? I am correct. So with this hand here, we have to start with the Chupacabra here. The question is, do we set this to make sure like we don't discard? Yeah, we're just risking. We're just risking it, dude. All right, one to four. Boom. Boom. This adds, uh, this adds level five or higher, dude. No, man. Uh, this is not okay, dude. Declare. Pitch. Special summon in defense. Oh, my God. I forgot to draw for the danger. It's even better than I thought. Ceruli. Effect. Chain link one. Chain link two. Dark world library, right? You discard a card, draw two cards. Okay, so for the library, we discard Brow. Oh my god. For the Ceruli, we discard Silva. Silva comes back, pops two cards out of their hands. Brow draws us another card. No. 
Yeah, that's what I mean. We draw like so much that we draw multiples of the library. If you balance this out to have like enough things to just keep going, we just fuse by discarding two, make the big daddy. This triggers both of them. We can pop our own Ceruli to give it back. Like if we want to use it later, we draw. It's not okay. We can like, I mean, th th that clearly needs some more discard ways, like ways to just discard. But like in this state, I've gotten here. Opponent has four cards in hand. We got this thing, which let's say they use something, right? I just go effect, change your effect to I have to discard a card, discard Silva, Silva comes back, boom, you got one card in hand. You have one card in hand, dude. One. Wait, wait, no, we can even do more. No, 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 wait. Oh, no, we can use this thing. Oh my god, even on our turn, we use this, we use it to discard Cerulee, dude. So Ruli goes here. So Ruli discards and now they have two cards in hand, dude. <laughs> they only have two, man, because Silva is also not once per turn, man. And we have another fusion spell. No. The question is not if this is consistent enough, dude. I haven't drawn a single gate to Dark World, and I haven't drawn a single of this. Dude, this card is completely busted, man. And I haven't even used Dugaris. I haven't normal summoned. This deck is busted. Okay, unlucky. Uh, in this case, I think we want uh, Jackalope, because that's a guaranteed one. Oh no, dude. It's not okay, man. It's no effect, dude. Give me the gates. No, give me this guy. Oh no. Oop. Effect. Chain link. One. Chain link. Two. Uh, this adds level five or higher. So we get the silver. We pop the graph for the draw two. Banish, special, draw. He comes back. Boom. But this. No, man. No, we're not ready, dude. <laughs> this is not fair, dude. This is not fair. Oh, it, it only boosts Dark World monsters, so you need to have a Dark World monster on the board, not just a danger. Okay. Makes it a little worse, but still not an issue, I think. Like, we could have played this entire sequence in a way where we just used the snow first, right? I mean, just to finish this thought right here, we have a rank 8 right now, so we can probably make something that negates something like Nibiru, but I don't even think we care about Nibiru, honestly. We just keep going afterwards. But, like, just for the record, we have a rank 8 here if we want to. Since this is not once per turn for no reason, dude, we can, go we can do that again, activate it again, banish, pop the Cerule, draw a card, give them the Cerule. That special summon Silva. Bro, the bouncing is also not once per turn. If I just link these off, dude. Like, look at this interaction. I link these off. I have a link too. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I bounce the Silva for the rainbow. I bounce the rainbow for the Grapha. Because I can do that. Why can I do that? This thing just gives it the rest, right? Like, before this guy, everyone was like, yo, what if it's not consistent? That question is out of the room now. Like, this, the, the question has literally left the chat. This card is insane. Oh my god, I hit my own Chupacabra. It doesn't matter, dude. We can do so much. We have another... Oh no, we can do this again. The thing is, what are they even going to do about it with a ban list before the stuff comes out? They can't really prevent much of this. They can't ban Grafa because then this card is completely useless because it needs Grafa as a material, right? Do you really think they're going to ban Silva? Right, we haven't even talked about Dragdown as well. No, you don't have a hand if you're playing against this deck, dude. You're not playing. You have no choice, dude. You're not playing. This is probably the closest to a guaranteed hand loop we've ever had. Because it's so consistent. It's basically danger FTK all over again, but like insane. The only question is going to be how well can it play going second? Because that was the main thing about the danger FTK back in the day, right? It could just win going second in that format. We haven't even looked into the possibility of card destruction, which if you resolve card destruction, you just win the game. Besides floodgates, I don't see what stops this. Like dweller, blockbird, shifter, of course, all of those stop it. But besides that, dude, I don't see it. 
Like, you're not gonna ash this deck and be fine most of the time. Gamma is not gonna do it. Nibiru is not gonna do it. Because we don't care about our board. All we care about is, like, keeping our hand size up and summoning Zilva over and over again. Maxi, to be fair, in the OCG kind of stops the entire idea, right? If you Maxi this deck, you can't get hand looped anymore. So, you can deck out. Um, I mean, they're gonna have more hand traps. I don't know if you can, actually. But if you play card destruction, you probably can. Oh my god. Yeah, Droll f*** this. Okay, when do we get these cards, probably? I think it's August for the OCG. It's gonna be very, very interesting to watch out for the OCG meta and see if, what kind of impact they have. I would be very shocked if they didn't have a great impact, even in a maxi format. Like, all of these cards are so, so good. You can already bounce it with Akashic Magician, Security Dragon, or switch it with Transversor and bounce it with Graffa. Dude, you're right. It's actually crazy, man. Oh my god. I think if you have one Ceruli and one Silva, you can just recycle both, right? You can Akashic the Ceruli back to your hand and you can Graffa or Rainbow the Silva back to your hand. So literally, if you have one of each, you can do it like twice. Akashic can bounce both at once. Oh, you're right. We're just bouncing both! Why did you say that? Oh my god, dude. One Akashic just gives us both back. We just Ceruli Silva them twice. Every time, man. Literally, one drag down and two Silva, no hand. It is so easy to do. And we haven't even talked about like rank 8s, rank 5s, other rank 4s, rank 3s we can get with the dangers. Okay guys, I think we forget about this until these cards come out now. This is just gonna break my brain to think that they thought this was okay. I think we're gonna just put this back a little bit and uh, not talk about it, okay? Thank you.